we have the CRO, which Annie, what is a CRO? Because in my day, it wasn't considered a CRO. A chief revenue officer. Chief revenue officer. We have Kyle York, CRO of DYN, Dine Incorporated. Sitting next to her, him is Ashley Goodwin, his right-hand gal, correct? That's right. <laughs> Without Ashley, you couldn't come on the show today. Well, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Ashley. Thank you for having me. Oh, we, it, it, the two girls and... <laughs> You, you, you know, you're outnumbered here. I know. We should have invited my mother. She had five <laughs> sons. So, Josh. Yeah, she'd be happy. She's probably yeah. my age. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kyle, tell us what I, we had, I had on my show back in the summer, I think it was, I had um, your friend and who is with e ABI, um, Melissa? M Michelle Peterson. Michelle yeah. Peterson. I, I kept calling her Melissa when she was here. I had Michelle, and she said to me, you have to get Kyle on. Now, Michelle is the, is she the She's CEO? a COO. She, she's the chief operating she's officer of the COO ABI. COO of ABI yeah. Innovation. Before we get into Dine, tell our listeners, and, and Annie and I were trying to, you, what was the question when we were looking up ABI and doing research on it? What was your question? So ABI Innovations is an incubator. Yeah, sort of. So, you know, I think, uh, well, thank you for having me, first of all. Oh, uh, it's please. great to be here. I was just saying this is kind of like a Monday after a really extended holiday. Uh, so, you know, 9 a.m. isn't so bad to get up in the startup exactly. world. So, exactly. Thank exactly. you for having yeah, me and not having to see. Yeah, it's not going, 6 a.m. You know? We're in good shape. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're great. I've had a coffee. And exactly. We're, yeah, we're in good shape. But um, yeah, so the ABI, um, I'm the chairman of the ABI Innovation Hub. Uh, we're headquartered on Elm Street in Manchester, right downtown. Um, the, the really premise of it is we consider ourselves the flag holders um, for the innovation ecosystem in the state of New Hampshire. So think any, think of it as a resource for anyone who's thinking about entrepreneurship, innovation, um, startups. Uh, where do you go to determine how to start a company, to find a co-founder, to um, raise your fundraising round, to be around like-minded people day in, day out? So we're less incubator, meaning we're not starting companies and incubating them. Um, we're really trying to be a resource system for people to um, have a head start a little bit or, or get some more support into their into their venture, into their startup. Um, we've got actually some big announcements upcoming too with the ABI. Um, we don't want it to just be considered a Manchester-centric thing. Um, so we've got a lot of things in the works that will expand it to the rest of the state. Um, we already run events and you know, we do startup Rochester. We uh, run a lot of kind of fundraising events uh, for startups, uh, but the idea of doing it statewide, getting up into Hanover, uh, getting done here in Nashua is something that we're really considering. Um, secondly, I think this day and age, especially when you think about marketing anything, uh, relevancy is the most important thing. Um, being someone from New Hampshire, uh, having moved away to go to Bentley, but also to move to California for my first startup, um, I think it's important that the state really tries to remain relevant and have an edge over other states, um, whether that be for um, for startups or technology companies. Uh, just overall economic development long term for the state is incredibly important. So that's another big mission, um, not only of the ABI, of Dine and myself, is to uh, continue to put New Hampshire on the map for um, the types of competitive advantages we can offer uh, folks. And so that's exciting. Well, I got involved with ABI, not directly involved, but um, uh, we did a lot of photography. I, my first photography gig was for, I, I don't think you were with me, Annie, um, your startup challenge. Oh, great. Yep. Excellent. And um, it is amazing. I ended up having, um, as my guest, besides Michelle, I ended up having nearby registry. Oh, great. Yeah, absolutely. Allison, Allison Graponi. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. And yeah. I was so impressed by these. Again, I'm outnumbered by age here. You're, you're probably, to, all of you are my age together, if you add all your ages together. Uh, but that, that's not quite, <laughs> but that would be very, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. don't be so hard on yourself this morning. Yeah. Oh, listen, are you yeah. kidding? I, I'm as young as I feel. Um, but we had Allison and uh, her, her team at, at uh, the nearby registry, which I am, we are a part of, you probably don't know this, but we are registered, we are cool. a company who is on the nearby registry. Just so impressed with these young kids 
doing what I mean this is it's phenomenal some of the ideas that came out of that startup challenge I was like wow why didn't I think about that well I think the internet has offered um, the potential for folks to dive into their idea and implement it a lot easier than it used to be a lot less uh, capitally intensive than it used to be Uh, so you know when we when we think of the ABI specifically, it's not just software, internet, or technology companies, but you have to be innovative. You know, you could be a CPA who wants to be CPA for hire.com and have some innovation into the accounting field. And I think that's the real key is helping people in, innovate so that they can have sustainability very, very long term. Um, and you did have one. One of your, um, which I was like really impressed about, one of the challengers was he had a used sporting good oh okay yeah the, yeah yeah i was like wow why you know hello what a great idea there's just tons of them and you know i think the, the key here is you know the most successful new startup ventures that, that exist and have success it's about execution so i mean you can have wonderful ideas all day long um we'll get into dine in our story but i mean i think that's what people need to remember is you still have to execute uh, you right. have to get out there and do the hard work and deliver uh, that's compounding if you do it well uh, and you're in the appropriate business model. But I think that that's a key here is is that should be should be mentioned is that innovation also doesn't just um, stand for the idea of the technology or whatever the that concept may be. It could be a business model, uh, the way in which you bring in income, the way in which you approach the market and distribute yourself. Um, so you really need to think about these things um, across the board. And what I like about ABI, um, and Annie, this is something you're going to, I'm sure you've already done at Bentley, is what you help them out with is doing a business plan, um, you know, making the whole, the whole concept on paper, come to life, yes. you know, and this is how, it, this is how you get your challengers. How do you pick, say, the, the, uh, there was like, I think four of them? Well, the startup challenge is one of, geez, probably five different programs we're involved in. There's also um, uh, the the tech out uh, competition that we run every year. There's a fund that goes into um, helping startups secure some early stage seed funding to get off the off the ground. Um, Startup Rochester is another program. Uh, the MYPN Startup Challenge is what we're talking about as well, where we sponsor. Uh, it's always different. I mean, you know, depending upon how, what program we're running, uh, there might be um, a lot of times there's a committee that's doing the selections, but we're you know there's a whole process to actually submit the the types of um, the types of startup plans. So they're actually submitting some sort of plan uh, that you have to at least get the general idea, you know, exactly. more, more of a submission, but it's kind of ironic that it's then the idea is to turn it into a business plan that actually has revenue and growth planning and all that. So I think the key is, you know, the ABI really wants to be known more as the, the um, champions for innovation and entrepreneurship in the state uh, and also make sure that we're connecting more advisors and, and other talent to help these companies get going. It's not just, you can have the best business plan, the best idea in the world. I just want to continue to remind you, you know, you got to go out there and you got to actually it's, get your hands yeah, dirty. You, and I execute, mean, you, yeah. it's, it's a lot of footwork. Yep. I mean, in any business, in any business, it takes, I mean, you start from start to finish and you're still not finished. Yep. When you've started. And what we've tried to focus on, too, is growth companies. So, you know, you could want to start a, a local you know, photography business. It's phenomenal. Um, you know, I think the, the idea that we've really come at it from is if you want to start a photography business that, you know, ends up looking like Shutterfly or ends up, you know, then it's a, that's a growth company that's going to require a different level of, of capital. Um, it would be the equivalent of, you know, if I wanted to start a marketing consultancy to help companies, um, that's one thing. But if I wanted to start a, you know, online portal and, you know, highly scalable web blog around marketing um, with advertisers and all the like that's a, got a global reach, um, it's a different sort of investment criteria. So I think it's helping people it's helping match people's motivations and ambitions with their with their functional capabilities and you know and, and that is I think sometimes a lot of times where startups fail is they think they want to be something huge um, but the path to get there they have no concept of how to do that so trying to make sure we marry that and the other thing I do like is the um, another one of my guests was from stay work play Kate let's You're go keep oh. Kate I had Kate on mm-hmm. You're keeping these young people here in New Hampshire, which, you know, hopefully will become 
a technical hub someday. Absolutely. I mean, I think so. Our CEO at Dyne, Jeremy Hitchcock, focuses a lot on education. So, you know, really his play is with UNH and Southern. He's the trustee on the board of Southern New Hampshire University, um, really involved in their online programming. Um, he's in the community college board. You know, his idea is really more around like, you know, how can we change education to create more relevant degrees, you know, whether in user experience design, whether in uh, computer science, um, software engineering, um, we don't produce enough of those types of talent in state um, to keep them here. And then we're not doing a great job on the next side where our COO, Gray China, with focuses is on workforce development. We're, you know, we have a lot, we have like a, I did it. I mean, a lot of people who grow up in New Hampshire who pick up after college and take off till their late 30s or mid 30s or early 30s when they want to start a family. Um, it's a great place to live and be. But if you're in your 20s, you want to be around people of a similar age and demo. Um, so he focuses a lot on workforce development, and then I've focused a ton of my energy with Corey Van Wallenstein, who's our chief technologist, more on the startup ecosystem, um, creating companies. Because um, I think at the end of the day, that's really um, grassroots, ground floor economic development. I mean, you can try to report, rec recruit the next Albany International in the New Hampshire, who, who for, for people who don't know, has thousands of jobs in Rochester, or you can really, from the ground up, have a real long-term vision and lens for what the state can become. Uh, and you gotta, you gotta kind of put, put the, again, in the same way we're thinking about like film, philanthropy, we've, that's how we want startups to think it's gotta be, it's gotta have vision. It's gotta have long term. We're pretty young. So we're going to have a lot of years in front of us. Um, how can we really shape the New Hampshire economy for the next 50 years? Oh, absolutely. Because, and, and Annie, I'm sure will vouch for this. Um, you grew up in New Hampshire, you know, you went to high school and the middle school, all of that in New Hampshire. And you see it as New Hampshire. You see 45 minutes away, a big city, Boston. Five, three hours, four hours away, New York City. These young kids, they, you know, oh, God, what, what does New Hampshire have to offer me? Yeah. I mean, what, I think it's a trick. I, I, I you know... I, one thing I think myself and, and, you know, my brothers who have moved back have really thought about is, you know, you can be a, a, a small fish in a huge pond or you can be a big fish in a small pond. And, you know, I never really understood that entirely until I wanted to start a family. Right. And yep. I think uh, I didn't personally I can get it a little into my story. I didn't personally think when I got out of Bentley that I would end up in New Hampshire, especially at 26 <laughs> uh, when I moved back. Um I definitely thought that my job opportunities were going to be more in Boston or a city like New York. Uh, but, you know, I think also you're seeing a lot more distributed workforces nowadays, too. I mean, there's more and more people even in my space of Internet performance at Dine that like live in New Hampshire because they want to. And right. they're in Keene. They're in Hanover. They're in Nashua. Um, and they work from home and they jump on planes or on the road. Uh, so that's starting to happen a lot more, too. Um, we've also seen an unbelievable amount of people who live in Southern New Hampshire who commute into Boston as they start to have families. Uh, and so trying to create more job opportunities for them in state so that they, they can, you know, benefit from lack of income tax uh, and also be closer to home and have a less hellacious commute down to Boston uh, is also an important piece of it. But yeah, I mean, it's tough. I, I think everybody wants to get that out of their system. You know, I, I always joke, I wish I went to I wish I went to college in like Hawaii or something. Um, right. You know, you always want to get something out of your system. <laughs> uh, and life experiences are what are going to drive your career success as well. So, you know, you want to be happy. It's so true. And I think more and more kids like Annie and my oldest daughter, Mary Catherine, she was living in Southie, you know, uh, Bentley graduate, had to do the, the city thing, you know, then realize, oh, the rents and Boston, the commute, you know, even commuting within the city is is a nightmare, she oh, yeah. said. My, my wife, Katie, uh, we met at, in marketing management class at Bentley our senior year. Uh, and when we got married, um, she, she had originally, um, she's from Winchester, Mass, and then went to Bentley and then lived in Brookline. And then we moved to California. Then we got married. Uh, and so what was interesting about her was she used to commute from Brookline to Cambridge and it would be like an hour and 10 minutes. Yep. And, you know, if the weather was bad, it was just horrible. And because the MBTA, yeah, I mean, or, or if the MBTA wasn't That's on right. that day, I mean, you're screwed. You're walking three <laughs> miles. Um, you know, so, you know, it's just a, a massive differentiator. And, and at that point in my career, I could just work from home 
equally as well, you know, as a young sales rep. I mean, I could work from home equally, probably better than if I went into an office. You know, so I think the world is changing and access to technology that allows us to kind of facilitate that those sorts of things. So, I mean, we have, I mean, Dyan, for example, has a San Francisco office. You know, we have an office in Brighton, England, which is about 40 minutes south of London. I mean, we're, we're opening an office. Uh, this is the first time I'm saying this out loud. I probably shouldn't actually, but we're opening an office in Sydney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll announce it. But, yeah. but we, I mean, I think people expect us to continue to expand globally. So we, we're getting out into Asia Pacific. Um, and so, you know, we're going to continue to do that, but also realize the types of talent, again, are going to be motivated by different things. So make sure that we're, um, you know, through our, through what we'd consider a really good company culture, how are we going to make sure we satisfy the demands of our staff? Well, make sure you know what they're motivated by. Exactly. And it, it's tough. I mean, it's tough for, for me to see what you young guys, like what motivates you now. And my generation is so, I mean, computers, we didn't know this kind of stuff. This yeah. is, we had to do it up here. Um, now you don't have to have a brick and mortar. Well, we're recruiting some like really important jobs in the company right now. And I've been joking around lately that like, how did they do this without the internet where I can creep on somebody on social media <laughs> and like totally lurk, oh, you know, so I'm, like true. a major lurker. Um, you know, and that's how I've gotten to some of the best people that I wanted to talk to was by taking a peek at their LinkedIn or following them on Twitter or Please say that you know. again. I want, cause we, we, all the time when my co my other co-host comes in, um, we discuss how to network and everything else. And we keep telling young people, watch what you put on your social media. Now, what I'll add to that, though, that I think you probably don't say, um, I think it's important that people are the same person at work as they are on social media or with their friends having drinks on a Friday night. Great. And I think what ends up happening too much is people um, create personas of themselves in different environments, whether that be online or whether that be at an office or whether that be out with friends or with family. And you can't live with four personas. You're going to drive yourself crazy. Um, so I think it's incredibly important nowadays because it's such a transparent, accessible world um, that you, you know, stick to your core values and beliefs. Um, you know, that's something my parents always instilled in me. I think it's important that uh, you are exactly who you are at work as you are. And in that's any other something that it's integrity. It's something yeah. that never changes. You're brought up with integrity. You're not going to lose it. I mean, there's ridiculous pictures of me on Facebook from like senior year of college. I mean, Facebook started up the street in Cambridge when I was a senior. And, you know, we were like one of the early schools after all the Ivies got in at Bentley. And I mean, there's like this horrible photo of me. Um, as a judge, I was like a judge at a party. Um, and it's like, shouldn't be up and I should untag myself. But I actually think that I actually think that that would be, you know, um, kind of, uh, I don't know, hypocritical of me because I, I think it's important that that was you. Yeah, I was 21. You I mean, know, yeah, yeah deal exactly. With it. Yeah, so things change. And but the social media is, you know, I mean, this is and I'm sure it, the technology today is just absolutely. I mean, you know. Annie has is going to the Bahamas for with Bentley. She has oh, that's to get a, great a trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't get to go. Right, I still Annie? have a. Yeah, it's a very touchy <laughs> subject. I actually, my my college roommate had and I had no money in college, um, and we ended up going to Vegas for two nights instead of the Bahamas because we didn't have like the eight hundred dollars you needed like three months ahead of time. Oh, honestly, Las Vegas would probably be just so much better. So it was now. really fun, but my wife went, who was just my girlfriend, and we had only been dating a few months, uh, Katie, and she went, and I, it was like the first jealousy period. You know? <laughs> And so, <laughs> well, it's like, a, yeah, are you whoa, kidding me? Whoa. Yeah, it's a crazy trip they do every year where they bring all the seniors. Uh, and so it's actually funny this year. We, we host an annual ballers club for top performers in the company. Instead of calling it, you most of us call this the president's club, but we have branded it the ballers club. Uh, awesome. And we're going to the Bahamas uh, in what, two weeks? Yeah. Two weeks. yeah. So there's cool. your trip. Yeah, Ashley has had such a great time uh, planning that. Um, it's ah. a, lot of, a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. A lot of work. And, but we're going to the Bahamas. And one of the reasons we're going is, that ended up as I'm like, I got to get this off this ship off my shoulder that I've never <laughs> that gone. You were yeah. Denied. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think my, my roommate, Mike Arsenal and I had a good time. And, uh, yeah. well, I, I remember the Bahamas when Mary Catherine went and she's, te she's telling Annie the other day, cause Annie's like, Oh, I don't want to live. I have to live with my, these two, you know, and I don't want to live with these people. And so 
my daughter says, um, and Mary Catherine, if you're listening, I'm going to tell that when she went to the Bahamas, she's like, ah, are you kidding me? We had some guy crashed yeah, on the floor. Right, right. Like, no one yeah. stayed you're in, in your room. room to sleep, people. If you're not, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, that's a good point. So we all do it. We all have had our ghost of the closet coming yep. out, and they it sometimes come out in social media, which yep. is not a cool thing. But um, I wanted to talk to you about um, – George isn't here t- for us to go to a break, but I wanted to talk to you to bring in Dine now. Yeah, okay, great. Um, what I we Annie and I went to your uh, Dine's that big camp. Oh, you the had geek summer camp, yeah, the kids summer oh, yeah. camp, geek we did, summer camp, right? The yeah. geek camp. Yeah. You're officially also, geeks. I, Congratulations. <laughs> I love that you guys had the Game of Thrones. Theme. Oh, isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, such I was a good all show. sorts of excited about that. Yeah, and you, Annie was like, she's walking, and this is before she got her job offer, and she's like, oh, this is my dream job. You know, the office is sick. Yeah, it's You guys awesome, have right? a great place in Manchester. Well, after you get your great training from a much larger company, uh, you, can come, <laughs> you can come work for us, because we don't spend that much on training. So, yeah, we will, though. We're doing. We have great training programs, but they're not sending people to India. That's amazing. Yeah, that'll come. Uh, yeah, it'll come. it'll come. It will absolutely it'll come. You're come. gonna have to. Yeah. But what I found fascinating is, and we never did. We we're on the days of the cubicles. You don't. Do you know what a cubicle means? Well, that, I mean, I would consider our. <laughs> right, Ashley? I would consider our our seating arrangement cubicles, but it's very different. It's very open oh. concept. I mean, for those who haven't been to Dine's office. Um, it's it's very open concept. Uh, we have everything from a stage, a rock climbing wall, a mini golf. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. It goes on and on. There's a speakeasy. Um, it, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, you know, and I think you know it's important to realize that if we go back to that theme we mentioned earlier about being who you are at work and who you are at home, we want people to actually want to be at the office. I, I, I think too many work environments nowadays are so lame and boring and you know, stuck up that no one actually wants to be there. So the whole concept around Diane's office is create an environment that people want to spend time in and work in. And, you know, just like our, we have also an unlimited paid time off policy, um, just like that policy. Uh, oh, Annie, know, okay. People people are pretty <laughs> smart. Maybe made yeah. a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, people are pretty Pretty smart about it, right? Like you could sit there and go into the speakeasy and drink scotch at 11 a.m. Or you could take 12 weeks off in your first year. But either of those are probably not how you'd want to operate either personally or in a work environment. So I think it's important that, you know, we have a trust based system where you bring in great talent and they have to, you know, do their jobs and they're accountable to the job function that they're brought in for. Which also makes for great retention. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In your employees. We, we hope so. You know, and I, I, you know, there's a lot of factors there. You know, we, we've been talking today about technology a lot. And, you know, if you think about, I mean, what Dyne basically does behind the scenes is um, we're kind of, an, we're an internet performance company that offers infrastructure to make the user experience of your website or your application more reliable, faster, put more control into the hands of our clients. So, you know, if you go to Netflix or Pandora or Spotify, um, you know, these are all customers of Dyn. So every time you go to these websites, uh, and we've got thousands of them, uh, you know, every time you go to these websites, the user experience that you're experiencing, the speed to get to that website, the types of content you see, you might see an advertisement because you're in New England as a, that you'd see differently if you're in India. Um, or the content might be in a different language. That's all. A lot of that behavior is. I, I'm laughing you. because I'm laughing because I said to Annie, I was like, what does Dine do? I can you explain it to me? Because it is it, it, it's very technical. It's beyond what we learned g- through business. Well, you just said Annie. Come, she was explaining all of this to me. I'm like, uh, I was trying to like put it into like stupid terms. <laughs> like I, I was using like like so. Say you go into a Target and you know you're looking for something, but you can't really see it because it's not on the sign. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. And, like that's kind of like what's going on like behind the scenes. She's like. Oh, that makes so much more sense. And it, listen, I, I've really struggled. I mean, I, I started in 2008, you know, I was the 15th employee, you know, sales and marketing were not things that were focused on at that point in time. They had had wonderful growth. The group of founders were engineers and they did an amazing job building this company uh, to the scale it had. Um, 
but then it was time to take it to a whole new level. And, you know, my job as the chief revenue officer is really, you know, chief marketing officer meets executive vice president of sales. You know, I oversee both because I think it's important for there to be accountability in one, one person, um, across the entire, you know, lead to close deal to retention of customer funnel. Uh, and that's where I've really focused a lot of my energy on now. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a great example. The other one I always give is, um, so if I want to go into my phone right now and call my mom, hi mom, you're probably listening. Um, I love you. Uh, but uh, if I want to go and call my mother right now on my cell phone, I actually don't know her cell phone number. So I go into my cell phone and I go, Mom, and it calls my mom and it goes to a cell phone tower here in Nashua mom, and then to a cell phone tower listen, in Bedford. You yep. don't, don't feel yep. bad. I'm, I'm right there with you. Yep. Kyle's mom. I, yeah. Oh, Kyle she gets it the, now. She uh, could yeah, probably that, sell it. So, that was yeah. the example. Yeah. Annie that gave was the exact same one. I was like, so you're like the website name. So like I went on this one website to try to like yep. get it in a simplified terms, like howstuffworks.com. And I was like, okay, so pretend howstuffworks.com is someone's name in your contacts. And I was like, say it's like John Smith. I'm like, you don't know John Smith's phone number. I'm like, just like you don't know the actual like secret numbers, the IP addresses yeah, exactly. that are hidden behind the website. I'm like, so what DNS does is it does it all for you. So you sure you want to go to India? <laughs> Yeah. See what mo- mo- I mean, exactly. That? Most people we hire have no idea um, what we do. You know, we've tried to really level up the company to not just sell to the hardcore tech geek. I mean, the more successful company we're going to become is when the business side of that company understands um, why the investments in this type of technology are important. Right. Because if I'm if I'm, you know, let's say I'm uh, Zappos dot com is a client of ours um, and, you know, Tony Shea is their CEO and you know their CTO comes to him and says, uh, you know, hey, we need to drop X amount of dollars on Dine to ensure our website performance is excellent for our customers. Um, that guy better understand that if if they don't leverage somebody like Dine, the CEO is accountable to the revenue, the user experience of those customers across Got the board. It. So I, I think if we can if we can get better and better and we're and we're doing this at um, positioning our business more as internet performance more as how you manage the user experience for your customers um, we're gonna we're gonna see a very large company uh, built out of dyne and I mean, dyne has quite an impressive list of clients which how do you okay let's 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 go back to the beginning how did you get all these clients well, the beginning, we were fortunate we had um, a very uh, tech insider hobbyist named brand from the st- starting roots in WPI where Jeremy and the crew started the company. Um, the, these people were using our services at the beginning to do remote access. This is b- days before you had a PDA or laptops. You know, you'd, you'd go to a... PDA. Uh, not not public display of effects. Yeah, yeah, no. that's always been around. I, I, from what I hear, that's been around for centuries. Yeah, I, I um, had it in my day too. Yeah, but basically, they used to do remote access, so they they need a name to access the computer tower under their dorm room desk, right? So it was basically that, and and they had developed this service that was a free service for years and years and years. It had some fanfare, so we basically just repackaged and positioned the story of Dyn. You know, we run globally scalable you know, infrastructure systems. And then we really got super smart and focused about how we wanted to go attack that B2B sector. Um, And what we did really is we broke it down into vertical segments. We said, you know, what types of web properties or what types of businesses have web properties that they're, they're kind of like the lifeblood of their business. So you think about e-commerce, you know, if your website's down or slow, you're going to be in trouble. You think about advertising, you know, the the ads you see all over these web pages, those are being served by ad platforms. Uh, They're going to care. If you think about like subscription based services like or a good examples would be like Salesforce.com. Right. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a SaaS uh, software as a service company. Um, and then the last one would be media. You know, think of CNN, New York Times. You know, Boston.com. You know, these people need to serve that content to their eyeballs. And you know, especially the newspaper space. I mean, that's that's it's a different topic altogether. But I mean, they're all evolving towards online. Um, so we picked these verticals and we said we need to find very strategic accounts in these verticals that we can convince to let us market the fact they use our services um, to the next 
tier of customers in that space. And we did this very methodically across the beginning first couple of years of Dyn, um, built up that baseline and then started really scaling out our talent and our and our resource spend to go into the market and acquire. And when did Dyn start up? What year? So they started uh, officially um, incorporated in 2001 um, and ran basically as a a B2C consumer web application for that remote access service from 2001 to 2008. Uh, In 2008, um, myself joined with a group of us. Um, It was kind of like the next generation. I always say that we're kind of almost like second founding team. You know, we we weren't founders of the company. There was a baseline company that existed that was doing extremely well. Um, But 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 Jeremy, who's our CEO and co-founder, I mean, they had a choice. They could have continued to run it kind of as a lifestyle business, a really quality smaller business, um, or they could have they they switched gears to really become a growth company. you know, it could have failed. They could have, but they Jeremy wouldn't have failed. He would have been right there running a great lifestyle business um, with great consumer customers. Um, today, we still service those customers. We have four million active consumers who use us. Um, wow. We have six hundred fifty thousand paying uh, consumer right. smaller home office users, uh, and then we have about three thousand enterprise customers who use us. That includes some of the names I've mentioned. So you then are a hub, a server. You are the main like. My little website, I need a server. Do you know where you host your website or who built it or how does yes. it? Yeah, so we, we, I, w- I would say less of that. We're more the traffic cop, right? So we're the ones who are determining um, you might be hosting in one location or if you're a site like Twitter who's a client of ours, I mean, they're hosting it in thousands of locations. And, you know, you may not realize that, but, I mean, that's pretty ridiculous technology that you can go look up a hashtag and it shows you what people are hashtagging that right then. Um, so if you think about Amazing. that, um, we're doing a lot of the uh, geographic routing, the speed-based routing. Um, we also do a, a service, uh, our message management service for email. Um, think about when you get like receipts, like automated emails, like right. from websites, a password reset, confirmation email, um, you know, an alert. You know, let's say you're on a dating site. I'm not saying anyone in the room is. Um, I th- uh, you know, I'm married. I'm not. But that's a huge market for us. It's big in yeah. the college. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a crew. huge market for us, um, job sites, dating sites, and our email platform, uh, transactional email. So we're really just the pipes that are delivering, you know, think of it from browser to inbox to mobile device back to browser. I mean, these these websites want to keep your engagement level up, um, and, and we do that by hardcore internet performance. So it's not like a constant contact email marketing per se. It's more of just the actual automated, like, I go to L.L. Bean and I buy boots. Yeah, something. totally. So L.L. Bean, like, yeah, L.L. Bean might send you a campaign using a constant contact or a MailChimp or an exact right. target, right? right? They may send you marketing campaigns, um, but their website also wants to have an e- email as part of the experience. Uh, and so we do, yeah, all the transactional. That would be a comparator. You know, I think a lot of those email service providers that are doing marketing related emails, right. um, some of them have these types of services. Oh, you don't need all the bells and whistles on the front end. Well, we're going to give you this back end, you know, database to be able to send things around. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, I would consider it a competitor and we know Gail Goodman, their CEO. Well, I mean, that's a company who's, you know, five to seven years ahead of us, um, in revenue and we hope to catch them. Catch a contact. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So let's bring Ashley in. Hello. <laughs> You've been sitting here nice and quiet, shaking and looking. and, and She and hears me talk a lot. So. <laughs> um, what do you do for Dine? Um, I am the executive assistant to Kyle, and I help support the sales and marketing team. So you, as the executive assistant, have to know all of this stuff. I mean, you have to be pretty up on all of this stuff, correct? Um, I try my best, but I'm pretty tied up with other things. <laughs> so, yeah. But if if you were to, um, if Kyle, say, needed another assistant, and this is for anybody out there, um, do you need the technical knowledge that obviously Kyle has and that I don't have, but could you work at Dine being a layman like myself yes. as an assistant? <laughs> you could. Yes. Um, I remember I studied up really like for hours before my interview, and then no one asked me anything about it. I was so upset. I'm like, oh, I know what DNS is. <laughs> Ask me. We have a lot of experts. I mean, you know, it's kind of like, I mean, I, I, I fool people a lot because I've worked in the industry so long. I mean, my entire career has been on it, working for internet subscription revenue companies. And it's so funny. 
I mean, I always joke that I can, I'm like my own worst enemy. I'm pretty dangerous. Like I know a lot about technology, but I'm not an engineer, right? So there's people in our company who know way more. I know the surface of this stuff. Um, there's people in the company who know way more. And there's a lot of roles in the company that, you know, Ashley's responsibility is to understand our, our, our sales team, our sales process, our kind of go to market strategy, um, the people mostly. I mean, don't forget that companies only function with That's their right. employees and their staff. So, I mean, I, I think her function is to ensure that, you know, all the trains are on time. Um, I always joke like she doesn't work for me. I work for her. I mean, that's that's the type of approach I want her to take to her day to day. Which is awesome because that's how you and I were conversing the whole that's time right. about, <laughs> oh, he can't make it. He had the flu or, you know, what? and I thought. Yeah, sorry. That was wimpy. <laughs> <enough."> <laughs> You were scared. Yeah, was, you were just too scared nervous, to come on yeah. live. I know, no, too nervous. But I think it's really cool that we still have these roles. I mean, this used to be way back in the days of secretaries and, and stuff like this. We're not secretaries anymore. We are a part of a team, and pe- we need people like Ashley to kind of balance out. Well, and you just can learn from just listening to that's one right. conversation for Kyle. Like, Me? Yeah. I, <laughs> just, just now. We just it has it. gone <laughs> over. <laughs> My head is like spinning. I'm like, you know, I, I, I'm a visual learner. So by well, you telling me. you brought a whiteboard. We love like, whiteboard. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right? The white, the old. Oh, you still use a whiteboard. Yeah, we use a lot of whiteboards. No, um, Mom, that's a blackboard with chalk. A whiteboard yeah. is like the extra I, I know marker. what the whiteboard <laughs> is with the. It's with idea the, paint on the wall. You right? don't even get whiteboards <laughs> anymore. You just paint it's the wall and you can draw on it. But I think it's very cool. It's it's amazing to me where you guys have come from. I mean, you all grew up on computers. Yep. Nursery school, you had a little computer that you were taught on computers. We know I they teach me. My daughters have taught me everything I know about a computer, which isn't a whole heck of a lot. But well, it's enough to get me well, by. I, I didn't take that as an insult. <laughs> what well, no? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say there's been innovation at all times, so I think it's easy to look at today's innovation um, and and think that way. Uh, you know, think about everything from when the phones and electricity were invented all the way up through to the computers today. I mean, we don't even we don't even really know. Um, one of our biggest customers in the world is Angry Birds. You know, it's a oh company called God, Rovio out of awesome. Finland. Like, <laughs> you don't know what's next, right? You don't know what people are building or thinking about. Um, you know, if your idea is not like if people don't think your idea is stupid, it's probably not innovative. So, you know, I think we've seen a lot of very successful companies come from ideas that are kind of like, what are you talking about? And they end up being really successful because those people execute and believe so much in it. And I think I always tell tell younger people, I mean, I'm young myself, but, you know, I think it's important to be incredibly ignorant um, and naive uh, to be successful in entrepreneurship. Because if you're not thinking ignorantly that I can make this happen, um, then you won't. And then you're not going to inspire others to believe or it either. You, if you think that, oh, I know that, I don't need to, you know, you're not learning. Yeah. Look how far Dine has come in the from the start to now. Yeah, we have 300 employees now. Uh, you know, this is the, lar- I, I never thought I'd work at a company this big. That may sound funny. Um, I, you know, always thought I'd work in startups. I consider myself a growth guy. You know, I, I don't even know if I'm like the start a company guy. You know, I'm the type who wants to come in and help juice, juice revenue of businesses, help them grow, create a market position. Can um, I hire you? Uh, <laughs> I'm not ready yet. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I, I need, I need somebody to build this photography. I'm losing Annie now, and you know. I'd be happy to get coffee anytime. There I, you I, go. I, I, and I think that's the, going back to the first topic of the ABI. That's the most important thing. It's the for an ecosystem to thrive, you actually need people um, to commit to it and put their time and energy um, where their mouth is. And you know, I think that's we have a lot of people in the state um, who are very supportive of. Um, startups and technology and entrepreneurship. I mean, I'm a member of the Entrepreneur Foundation of New Hampshire. Uh, there's people like uh, Matt Reitmeyer and Jesse Devitt from Borealis Ventures or uh, Matt Pearson uh, from 10X Ventures, who's, who's been around forever. There's great companies down here. Paul Long from da- Data Gravity. Data Gravity They're the Ecologic folks are starting a company right here in Nashua. So it's like it's everywhere. And you just need to, 
I, I always encourage people that I talk to to be very, very, very open with their time. Um, and it's, you know, my brother Travis always says, I'll always take an informational interview, even if he has no job. And I, I that's tough sometimes. I mean, that's Ashley, Ashley is going to kill me sometimes on my schedule, but you know, I have a hard time saying um, no to things because I, I never want to be perceived as inaccessible or elitist or too busy. Open. Yeah. You have yeah. to, you have to do everything you can. Um, you know, I don't think it, you're ever actually as accessible as you think you are. So you need to also be more proactive the other way around. Absolutely. And we're all on the same playing field together. I yeah. mean, that's this is how you guys got. So I'm from the old day where, you know, there was that hierarchy. It doesn't work. I mean, we all sit in cubes. We just hired a new CFO. And he says when he started, I haven't sat in a cubicle since 1982 or something like that. Really? And, you know, it, and it's so it depends on the type of company. I mean, I, I think the beauty of Dyne is we actually are um, – you know, more of an internet infrastructure company, like I think of an EMC or an IBM or a Cisco or an Oracle, but we operate um, much more like our clients, like a Twitter or like an Angry Birds or like a Netflix, right? And I think that type of core ethos to look, act, feel, be more like your customer segment than your competition right. is, a, again, back to the relevance and standing up from the crowd equation. Usually I, I rock like a Dine T jeans, you know, um, it was kind of freezing, so I couldn't find <laughs> my yellow You're hoodie. Up. Well, I have a, I have a, <laughs> I have a, radio. I have a yellow hoodie, um, a dine hoodie. Cause like we're, we're really like yellow. We want to own the color yellow in our marketing. Um, Why? um, because it's different and you know, usually it's a, um, it's a, it's, it's a complimentary color and it's not the color. It's bright. Um, it's so happy. it's bright. It's happy. It's accessible. Uh, it's loud. It stands out. You'll know dine people when you see them. Um, but someone stole my hoodie in the office. I'm, I'm convinced of it. Um, so if anyone's listening, <laughs> And they see a yellow hoodie size large. Um, I, I should have put. I, yeah, I think it was probably gray. Our COO. He's one. He, he, we you sit next put your to each other. In the, you know, like your mom used to do for your coat. Exactly. I know. I was just watching Back to the Future actually, and uh, when he, when it's Calvin, they keep calling him Calvin Klein because his underwear is Calvin Klein from the future. Um, but yes, I do need to do that. Uh, uh, but yeah, and I can also just get another one probably from the swag closet that we have. But yeah. Swag in it. <laughs> I know what swag means. Don't look at me like that. I know what swag is. I have swag. One thing I, I think is important, too, we actually have this secret speakeasy room that's not so secret anymore because our chief technologist, Corey, did an interview with the Boston Globe uh, and let them take pictures of it, uh, Corey. So it's um, no longer a secret. It's not a secret. Um, <laughs> Once the Boston Globe gets it, forget about it. But you got to love the comments on any website nowadays. Um, and some people were saying, oh, here we go again. You know, it's the tech bubble happening. You know, all these stupid costs. Um, the one beauty of that, Ken Dion, who's our general contractor, um, he, he built that the space in the mill yard in Manchester. Chester, um, that was his gift to us as a room, and he never told us about it till the end. Um, wow. he, yeah, he's a certified uh, uh, he's a certified uh, hunting guide, and he's got like a bunch of his taxidermy in the room. It's totally like a lodge. You feel like you're at like a ski resort. Um, but he did the room. Um, I think it's also important to realize like a ski ball machine and a mini golf course and are actually really cheap in the grand scheme of things. You had a little cafe. Yeah. I was, you know, yeah. it's amazing to me, and I look. At all the long tables that you you have, and I I sat there. I said, "How do you concentrate working like this? Aren't you, don't you? Ha I I like to be by myself with not nobody looking at me typing so slow. But you're all together. Doesn't that become? In well, let me ask you, Ashley. Is that kind of an intimidating kind of thing, or do you like the fact that? You're very transparent there. No, I like it a lot. And there's many places you can go and sit and be by yourself if you want to. Or it's just kind of white noise now. You don't really notice it. They're, and people aren't playing constantly. So it's it's just every day. <laughs> there's a scene yeah. in the social network movie where he's locked in listening to music. You guys yeah. remember that? Yeah. I mean, that's I mean that's how a lot of the engineers work as well who are coding. You know, they they have headphones on. They're listening to music or podcasts. Well, I just we just watch... <laughs> Oh, the, my husband the internship. And I, oh, I, oh, I actually, I thought that I was, was like, hilarious. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. On is, the line. We were, yeah. was that, <laughs> that's my line. favorite part. Yeah, I was dying. Yeah, I watch and it on an airplane. I watch like, the most movies on airplanes, but yeah, that was when I was watching. I was just like chuckling and shaking the whole row. You know, oh, it was well, really that was funny. me. Owen was me. I mean, it's like wow. You know, the, it's so different. It is so different from when we, you know, we're we're, we're developing our careers. And I was like, the first thing I thought of when I saw that, the movie, the internship, dying. I was like, wow, that looks just like 
Remember when we were at Dying Yet? Well, we, I mean, let's not. Let, we're not like you know really that innovative here on the office space. I mean, we're totally ripping off a lot of these West Coast. Of course, and you are. Companies. And I mean, everybody else is yeah, ripping off. The, everybody. And the reality is, is it just no one's doing that here, oh, right? In, the, in, you guys in are New like England, one of the you know? only. Even so there's in a few. New Ham- well, in New Hampshire, in New Hampshire, we're probably, probably one of the few. Um, you know, even the ABI space, we've tried to model off of that. Um, you know, but I think that's the key. Is is it's actually not that expensive it's inexpensive to do those things it's less expensive like our our office space i'm not going to say how much it costs but i mean it is so inexpensive to run our business Mm -hmm. here in new hampshire um and to do those sorts of things so i think that you've got to remember that it's it's it may seem like oh you know overindulgence um in the startup world doing all these things but it's actually way less money to do some of these things and keep your talent absolutely and it does that you you hit the nail on the nose it's keeping talent. I mean, you don't want – it's, it's it, what I do see in with this generation, your generation, it's a revolving door. Oh, it is. Oh, I'm bored with this. I don't like this. I'll go to another job. And what I'll say to that, you know, I, I'll speak to that briefly because I'm like sort of a weird millennial. I don't know what I am actually. Um, but I think I, I tweeted this a few weeks ago and kind of got in a Twitter battle with a few people. But I, I think the, the earlier – what I always say is the earlier you decide what you want to be when you grow up, the earlier you'll be what you want to be when you grow up. And, you know, I know that there's a lot of, you know, people change, you know, and they're in their, again, their ambition changes, their interests change, their hobbies change, their career motivations change. Um, but I think it's in this day and age, if education can shift a little bit more to helping people figure out what they want to do when they grow up, um, earlier uh that's better and that's a big push of the abi and dine and the educational focus is you know can we help people realize for themselves the types of opportunities that are out there earlier and then try to stay as true to that as possible i mean my career path is is i'd say it's like a consolidated one to get to the you know executive officer position of a company like this um but it's because i you know i got an internship after my freshman year at bentley at a market research firm right in nashua actually um and then right after my sophomore year i i started working for a company whipple hill i never treated it like an internship they they sell prep school um software systems are out of bedford new hampshire uh and and i stayed there for six and a half, seven years and was incredibly loyal. I moved to the West Coast for them, um, spent a couple of years out there. And I always say that that advanced my career five to 10 years because I took some risks and I stayed so laser focused on where I wanted to get. Um, now that I'm here, it's less about me. Um, and it's got to be more about dying, uh, not dying the entity, but the people and the type of impact. The culture. Yeah, it's the now culture. The culture. Yeah. But it's the impact you can create on the community, on the internet. I mean, that's a, that's a big, bold goal, right? You're like, wow, how much of the internet traffic can we run? You know, you know, how, how, how many offices can we have globally? How many families can we feed? Um, you know, and who knows, you know, where this company goes, but let's, you know, say someday it decides to be a public company. Well, that's a whole different, um, governance. It's a whole different set of stakeholders and shareholders. Um, and I think that's where we're starting to think from a big picture is how big of an impact can we have on every community in which we operate in. Do you think Dine will eventually go public? I don't know. I mean, we have lots of options. Jeremy always says good companies have, um, have set themselves up for many financing options. Um, you know, we bootstrapped our company from 2001 to 2012. What that means is you scale with your revenues, uh, you know, with your customer base. You don't borrow someone else's money or sell half your company to a private equity firm. Um, we raised some capital in um, October of 2012. It was $38 million, um, a Series A round. Uh, we were able to do that and maintain control of the business. So we have minority um, investors. Um, that just goes to show you the scale of how big Dine is, um, that we didn't have to sell that much of the company. Um, but we brought on a really professional seasoned board of directors. Um, we've added four executives in the last uh, year uh, to, to us young guys who have got it, gotten it here, but we realize what we're good at. We've also added something like maybe eight more um, senior leaders uh, that are VPs in the company, vice presidents. Um, and so we continue to add leadership. Um, last year we added, uh, um, I think the number is like 17 senior leadership positions, so VP or higher, but 90 um, directors or lower. So, you know, it's not, all, it's everywhere. All the, the dream of one Jeremy. Yeah. I mean, well, Jeremy, so Jeremy was one of four original founders. Um, he's the only one who stuck it out and had the commitment to it this long term. Um, and I give him a ton of credit for kind of his vision that he had to, to 
not only for the business, but for himself to, to stick it out through some tumultuous times. Cause when, you know, a founder leaves, you know, it's not easy, right? You saw that in the social network. Movie. Social network. Um, it didn't get that bad, but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, well, we're down to a minute. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Where, if these young people like Annie coming out of college or interested in, how do they get in touch with Dine? You obviously have a website. Yeah, great. <laughs> What's well, your website? Well, well, a couple things I'd say. Um, it's not just young people. Like, let's make sure that anybody out there with a, with a quality resume or, or the hopes of a quality resume um, come to careers at Dine.com. Um, Dine.com. And, and Very simple. D-Y-N.com. Kyle, Ashley, and Annie, thank you so much. Please come back and tell us more about how these young people can end and their dreams. Yeah. And my everybody, no, we're, no. everybody, but everybody. I'm too wide now. Have a great week. Thank, thank you. you so much all for being with us, and have a happy new year. Happy Brand new, new year. year. Thank you very much.